Hello guys and welcome to this demo about FT Toolbar 2. So to launch it, uh, I'll go into my window and launch FT Toolbar 2. So for people who don't know it, I'll run it as trial first. Uh, it's a customizable toolbar for uh, your workflow. So the first time you're gonna launch it, it might take just a little time because it's gonna unpack uh, all the icons with it. There we go, so now you have it. So, like you can see, it's just a panel with different buttons on it, which you can customize and add as many buttons as you want. So I can basically um, move it wherever I want, like uh, right there, and have just a personal toolbar like this with all the functionalities I'm going to use pretty often. So just to show you, and let me undock it first, there we go, all the kind of buttons you can have with this. Uh, so basically if I select uh, my uh, adjustment layer, go to FX, and I'll press uh, this button which says it's a fast blur, it will apply a fast blur directly on it without me to, so I don't have to go through all the the effects and stuff to, to look for my effect, you know. Uh, then what you can also do is apply an effect with predefined uh, parameters, so like if I click on this one, you can see I have a level, but it also had some uh, default settings. Rather than uh, if I had to apply exactly the same one, um, you know, it would have like both settings instead. So that's something else you can do. Uh, you can apply expression as well directly on, on your property. Like, uh, let me select position, for instance, and click on wiggle. This one will apply a wiggle directly on my selected property. Uh, right there, so now I have my expression set up. Uh, you can also create several things like applying JavaScript or even launching an external application. Like this one will launch uh, the, the calculator. Here we go. So yeah, I'll show you how to create all those buttons uh, once. What you have uh, at the end is the edit uh, toolbar button which will launch uh, the toolbar editor like this and I'll get in depth uh, with all those uh, settings. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is in case you've been using the previous version of toolbar, uh, I'll show you how to import your old settings. So if I launch my old, the, the previous version of toolbar 1.28, which basically it's gonna launch with the default settings because I just reinstalled it. Okay, so I'll go to Edit, which opens the old uh, toolbar editor, and I'll go to Export, and just on my desktop, uh, I'll choose, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll leave it like this. I'll close that, and close this, okay. And so if I click on Import Configuration File, I will open the the XML file, like this, open it, sure. Do you wish to import as a new toolbar or replacing all existing toolbar? I'll import it as a new toolbar, which will bring to my next topic uh, about the multi-toolbar system uh, built in into your panel. But for now, you can see that I have my old configuration file uh, imported into uh, my toolbar as well. So yeah, next topic, multi-toolbar. So one of the big new features about uh, toolbar version two is being able to have uh, several toolbars into the same panel like this. Uh, if you were using the previous version of toolbar, you might have noticed you could use several instances of your toolbar. So by just duplicating the script and giving it a different name, like I have on this one, uh, okay, sure. You can see that I have like two different toolbars, which I can keep uh, separated like this, okay, and I could probably do one like that. But you know, when you're on a small screen, uh, especially if I do it like this, uh, it's gonna take a lot of space to, to display both of them. So what you can do now is uh, exactly the, I'm going to do the same way with this one, is going to export, 
export my configuration file. Uh, it's exporting as a JSON. Okay. And I'll close this one now. Uh, no, I don't want to apply my changes, even though I don't have any. I'll close this toolbar and keep this one right there. Okay. And so I'll go back to general settings, import configuration file. Look for my JSON, which is this one. Okay. Open it and I'll import it as a new toolbar as well. Okay. And now I have this uh, toolbar, here we go, with all my uh, FT plugins I did develop before. So I have my uh, filmic contrast, my vignetting, everything. And so if I just select this and click on, let's say, okay, filmic contrast. It will apply my filmic contrast right away, okay? And I can keep everything in the same panel and just switch uh, into all my different toolbars by selecting that or just going like this, uh, you know, okay? So it's gonna be pretty easy. Uh, what I'll do is just uh, rename it. So if I select it just right there, okay? And I'll call it uh, FT plugs, okay? And I'll just delete this one. I don't need it anymore. Okay. So here we go. That's a big new thing. So you can still have uh, several toolbars and instance of toolbars, but you can have also everything in the same panel, which, like in my case, when you have a small screen, it's very uh, nice to have everything compact, you know, and concentrated at the same place. So next chapter, I'll get in depth into the different buttons type. Okay, so those are all the default uh, buttons installed with it, which will give you kind of a nice overview of all what you can do with uh, the different buttons. So you have an effect type, you have a JavaScript, which was an effect type with parameters, but I'll show you later. Uh, you have a special curves, you know, uh, you can apply JavaScript, you can apply expressions, and so on. So I'll go in depth with uh, all those uh, buttons. So let me just to keep things simple. I'll create a new toolbar. Um, okay, I'll just put that at the beginning. There we go. And so when you create a new toolbar, you have like a default button on it. Uh, so let's get into effect. To uh, apply an effect to it, I can just uh, use those two menu to you know select a a special effect I want. So let's say. I want to go into uh, keying and I'd like to apply key light. Here we go. So right away it will apply the special, what they call the match name. It's a unique kind of name for After Effects. And I have a, a tooltip which will show up on my button. So I'm just going to change that a bit. And so if I put my mouse over the button, you can see the tooltip under it. And I'll just Call that uh, KL to Kirai. Okay. And right now I can just test it right away. Just select the, um, the layer you want to apply it and just click on the button. And here we go, your Kirai is applied. Okay. Uh, let's say I don't want to go through all those uh, different uh, menu. So I'll create a new button and I'll show you another way to apply an effect. Uh, and for instance, let's say I'm gonna do a uh, change to color. Okay, I want to apply this one. And um, one of the best way to do it, in my opinion, is to select the, the the effect and just click on Get Effect Name, and it will apply the match name as well. It will find it for you and just apply it. You can notice that if you don't change the name at the very beginning. Uh, it will just set the name for you. I'll try to guess a name at least. So CTC for change to color, I'll actually just do a, oops, C2C like this. Okay, so it's my change to color parameter. So that's another very good way to do it. Now another one, let's say I want to apply an effect. So let's create a new button. 
but with some default parameters. So let's see what I can do. Uh, I'll do. Actually, I'll go with my vignetting. I'll take the simple one. Okay. And so by default, I have this big one. Uh, okay. Let's see what I. Okay. So it's very black, very dark. So I'm gonna set some default settings, and I know I'm gonna use kind of always those settings. Uh, I'd like to have it a bit harder like that, okay? And maybe just give it a blue tint like that, okay? And that is, when I want to push my button, I want to have this effect applied with all those parameters every time. So what I can do, uh, instead of, before that, you would have to type some JavaScript to, to apply it, but now I can just set the different old parameter I'd like, select my effect, and come to the get effect with parameters. And by clicking that, it will switch automatically to JavaScript and it will write the JavaScript for you. So if I delete it now and just uh, click on, okay, let's rename that to big for vignette, okay. And if I click on the, uh, my button, FT vignetting, all the parameters are set uh, for me. So it's it's a very nice and fast way to create some button with pretty fine parameters. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see another feature now. The active modifier uh, option right there. So let's say I'm gonna create a button which actually it's gonna be um, all the different bros I'm using, so I'm gonna call it uh, BL like that for bros, okay. And I'd like to use the fast blur by default, so I'll go to my different blurs and sharpen, okay, and I'll apply the fast blur, okay. So if right now if I click on it, it's gonna apply my fast blur. So great. But I'd like to have one button for all the blurs, and depending on if I'm pressing Shift or Command or Control, Alt, whatever, I'd like to apply some different uh, effects using exactly the same button so I can keep things compact. So I'll check that, and I'll go to the Shift click, for instance, and let's say now I'd like to apply a box blur. So sure, but I'd like to apply it actually with some default parameter, which is... Uh, let me apply it first. Oops. Okay, box blur. There we go. And I'd like to do two iteration, repeat edges, and do it like um, five pixels. There we go. Okay. So now uh, let's see. I'll select it, click on get effect with parameters, switch to JavaScript, and um, it's applied directly to the shift click. If I come back to the simple click, I still have my fast block. So what this means is if I click one time without any modifier, I still have my fast block. But now if I press shift click, I do have my box blur applied with the different parameters. So that's another new thing about it, which, well, you can keep all things very compact and yet organize different uh, actions to the same button. So yep, that's it for the the effects. I think we did cover everything about this one. Uh, now we'll go to the expression type. So let let me switch that so we'll see maybe a bit better. And I'll actually do that on my on the two like this. Okay. So I'll apply an expression on this one. So I have my button. Uh, let's go call that wig. Oops. Uh, wig. I'll type wig. Okay. And then I'll type wiggle. And uh, let's say 10 and 5, like this. Okay. Sure. Uh, okay. I'll just copy and paste that here. Okay. And now if I go over my wiggle, select my position and type OK. Here we go. I have my wiggle applied. And if I go to the expression, I can see I have exactly the same expression. So now I guess the yeah, the two will move like that. Okay, great. So that's 
the new uh, button coming up with the toolbar version 2. Let's get to some of our type. So let's create a new one. Animation presets. So this one is pretty easy. It just lets you apply any animation presets you would have saved on your hard drive. And in this new version, now you can have your animation preset saved anywhere on your computer. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'll just apply a new, let's say, SD. Um, sure, whatever. I'll apply this one. And I'll call that uh, trap. Whatever. Okay. And so if I select my adjustment layer like this, click on trap, it will apply the particular uh, directly with the default settings of the, the, the animation presets. So it's very easy. You can create your own animation presets. Just save it on your computer and uh, you can apply it like that uh, very easily. Next button is the script launcher. So script launcher is another one uh, kind of the same as animation presets, except now you'll be able to launch uh, scripts. So like now you can have your scripts anywhere on your computer, it doesn't matter. Uh, so let's see, I'll take the demo palette, which is, okay, default one, okay. Uh, demo palette, DP, and if I click on it, it will launch the, the script directly. Oops, I did click twice. Okay, so you can launch, uh, if you have lots of scripts and you don't want to have like panels or stuff like that, just launch it like um, a normal script. You can do it like that. Next uh, is the menu. So the menu is one of the most interesting and in the past were the most used, uh, in the past version, the most used uh, kind of button because I think it's the easiest for people. Um, so let's say I want to have a button which will uh, trim the, the composition. So I'd like to trim my composition right there. So right now you have to right click and trim the composition, right? So, and you don't have any shortcut for this. Now, if I use exactly this sentence, so trim comb to work area, so let's do it. Trim comb to work area and respect the case and stuff like that. I'll call it uh, TCWA. Oh, actually, I'll copy that there and do the TCA, uh, TCWA. Okay. And so now, if I just uh, come and click on it, the comp gets trimmed uh, directly to to that uh, to that area. So, and basically you can do that for any kind of uh, menu or almost all the kinds. Some doesn't work for some reasons, I wouldn't know. Uh, but usually if you use exactly like the three dots like that, you, you put exactly the same sentence, most, in, most of the time it's gonna work. So that's the menu uh, kind of button, which is very, very popular and very easy to use. Uh, then next button, which is the JavaScript. Okay, so for this one, basically all our scripts are done in JavaScript's uh, language. So, and basically you can use uh, their documentation, which you can open right from here, or just go to the help menu and script uh, scripting helping, or if you, you can just uh, see one of our examples, and we have posted on a website uh, some examples and you can just copy paste uh, some uh, right there. So if I click on script examples, it will open my this website with some different uh, settings people did post uh, or you, I did post myself actually. So let's see, add a quick solid. So we'll try this one, I'll just open it. And that's the script, so let's copy past mode, okay. Control C, Control V, okay, and I'll go back to uh, my After Effect and just paste it right there, okay. And basically, what it says is, if I have an active item, which is uh, the composition, 
uh, in this, oh, actually there's something wrong about it. Let's change this. We can var comp is equal to, actually I'll say that. Okay. Go and call that comp. And there we go. Okay, so let's try this one. Let's call it quick solid QS. Okay, and now if I have my comp selected and press on QS, it will apply this quick solid uh, with gray color on it. So you can do some very complex things in this uh, JavaScript. Basically, everything we are doing with all scripts, you can do it right there. Uh, but you need some knowledge in scripting though. So it's not the easiest type of button to use. Uh, and then we have the OS, which uh, basically uh, would launch any um, application. Oops, so I did switch. Okay, let's create a new one. So let's create a new one. Call that calc. Okay. And clear on. Okay, and just pass the open dash a calculator. Okay, I'll switch that to OS. There you go. And now, if I just click on it, it will should launch the. Here we go. The calculator like that. And basically, in this one, you can run any kind of command uh, you would run in your um, terminal. So that's it for this, all those different kind of buttons. Uh, next I'll show you a bit more about the, the general settings. Okay, so let's get back to general settings. And in those one, you have like just a few parameters. Uh, basically, you can change uh, the size of your buttons and you'll see that it does update in uh, kind of real time. Uh, you can change also the spacing between the buttons if you'd like uh, to it be more yeah having more space I guess uh, and you can change the the icon of uh, this edit button if you'd like to which was not possible in previous version but uh, yeah I'll go back to my default settings which was 30 and 0 0 Actually, it was maybe a bit bigger, but yeah, this one will do. Uh, you can import some uh, previous uh, settings as well, if you want to, or export it, <coughs> just like I did show you before. You can also change where to save uh, your configuration file. And what I usually do is that I put that into my Dropbox uh, account, and all my different computers does uh, use exactly the same configuration file. So if I change it in one place, it will update on a different computer. So you can just set the path you want uh, on your Dropbox and then everything, even your icons, uh, will get synchronized all together. And this one just will check uh, if you have updates available uh, online. So it will use your internet connection to go online and check if there's a new version and if you do have one, uh, a message will uh, show up right there or uh, even on this button. But you can force uh, to check uh, by clicking. Well, right now I'm disconnected, but uh, you can just uh, click to check if you have uh, an available new version of 2bar2. Okay, so I think that covers uh, all the different parameters you, you can do with uh, toolbars. I didn't show you the icons, but basically you can add any icons on your toolbar. I hope you liked it. Please send me some comments or feedbacks if you'd like to and I'll see you next time. Thanks.